Uh, okay, this is uh, a joint work with Ahmed Farahad and Mohammed Kamal Bas from University of Waterloo. So uh, I think you are uh, most likely you are familiar with the problem of uh, column subset selection, but I briefly explain what column subset selection is and then I will tell you what the uh, generalized column subset selection, the problem that we are trying to solve, uh, is going to be. Uh, column subset selection is the problem that you have a matrix and you are trying to select a subset of rows or a subset of columns of that matrix such that this subset of rows or subset of columns best span the whole matrix. And this has some applications. For example, if you present your data matrix such that rows are variables or features and columns are data points, selecting a subset of rows is basically selecting important variables. It's feature selection. And selecting a subset of columns is uh, selecting representative data. For example, in this example here, uh, data points are some handwritten digits and assume that they have been stored in a matrix such that each column is one of these handwritten digits. Selecting a subset of columns uh, give you, you know, uh, these fours and basically they are representative in a sense that all of these handwritten digits have been written in one of these styles. You can assume the same thing uh, for text. Subset of columns could be a summarization of the, your text if each column is a sentence. Subset of rows could be important terms in your text. So, so this is basically uh, column subset selection and more formally you can uh, form the problem in this way. You can define an objective function. Uh, when your matrix is A, you would like to select a subset of columns of A and you want to project A to this subset of columns. So you want this subset uh, to span the whole matrix the best. So you write uh, this objective function and you want to basically optimize this objective function when P is a projection matrix. If S is known, if we know which subset has been chosen, uh, clearly it has a closed form solution. You can find it in terms of uh, a list of square problem. And this is the optimum solution if, if, if S is known. So, uh, but of course, S is not, is not known and you need to, uh, you know, come up with an efficient solution to find. But before I talk about the solution, let me tell you about the generalized column subset selection. So, so far it was column subset selection. In generalized column subset selection, we have basically two matrices, a matrix uh, as a source matrix A and another matrix as a target matrix B. And we are trying to choose a subset of columns of A which span B, the target matrix, not, not the, the, the matrix itself, but another matrix. Uh, so the projection matrix P has been built based on a subset of A, but is going to span another matrix, a different matrix. And you may think that why this is an important problem. Well, in, in the last slide, I will show you that many existing problems and many useful tasks can be cast in, in this form, in this framework, in this general form. So, uh, <clears throat> but let me tell you how we try to solve this problem efficiently. Again, uh, when S is fixed, there's a closed form solution, a, a projection matrix on this form. Something nice about this projection matrix is that you can write it as a recursive, uh, basically you can find a recursive form for this. If there is a subset you know, if you, you assume that there is uh, S has two parts, set S has two parts, P and R, so you can write a recursive function such that P depends on another projection matrix built on a subset of S 
and a projection matrix based on R, the remaining uh, elements of the set, built on a set of the residual of this matrix. I will show you later. So based on this recursive function that you can, recursive formula that you can uh, build uh, for, for, for the uh, projection matrix, you can come up with a recursive function for um, the objective function that we are trying to optimize. So and this is basically the starting point for, for, an, opti for, for an efficient Grady algorithm here. So my problem is that I know what the cost function in terms of subset S is. And I'm adding a new column, I. And I would like to compute this new objective function, how much this column I will improve my objective function. So I can show that uh, there is a recursive function for this cost function of this form. So my, the value of my objective function is the value of the objective function for a subset of S minus this component. And this component is basically uh, based on F, which is a residual of B, means using P, which is a subset of S. C, P is a subset of S. Using a subset of S, I reconstruct B, and the residual is F. Using a subset of S, I, I reconstruct A and I call this residual E. And I make a projection matrix using this residual matrix, call it R. The amount that this cost function will be improved uh, can, be, can be computed this way, by, by, the, by this term. So my job is going to be, when, when I'm deciding to add a new column to S, my job is to basically maximize this second term. Because by maximizing this second term, I can improve the, the, this function the best. So the problem will reduce to maximizing this, this second term. And uh, <clears throat> which is, as I said, R is a, uh, basically a projection matrix built on, on the, uh, on, on the uh, residual of A, and F is residual of B. And by some linear algebra, you can show that you know, it can be simplified. This cost function can be simplified to this form. Uh, when, when G is just the norm of column I that you want to add, and uh, H is the norm of one of the columns of matrix F residual of B times residual of A. So uh, you have you know, a simple criterion that basically compute the amount that your cost function will be improved by adding a column I. It is uh, it's still you know, expensive, uh, but it's, it's skipping many details here. It can be shown that it can be simplified by, uh, in terms of memory and in terms of computation. Uh, details are in the, in the paper and I'm just skipping them. You know, you can simplify this a lot and make a, a, a linear form by computing A, a transpose B once and, and, and keep it and uh, coming with a sort of, uh, you know, update for two vectors uh, which, which allow you to select uh, basically columns uh, very efficiently in linear time. So uh, it, it, it leads to a very efficient algorithm, very quick algorithm. And uh, as I promised, I can show you that many existing algorithms can be cast in this form. The original column subset selection trivially is, is, is an instance of this general form. If you just choose the target matrix to be the source matrix, this column subset selection. And uh, you can, mm, use this for distributed column subset selection when the data is distributed over many different machines. You want to, for example, do map reduce. The target matrix could be a random uh, projection of the original matrix. 
It is uh, identical to some of the existing algorithm like SVD-based column subset selection. Uh, in a sparse approximation, you can assume that the B is your target vector. And in uh, simultaneous sparse approximation, you can assume that B is the set of vectors that you want to uh, simultaneously uh, approximate sparsely by some dictionary. So uh, many existing algorithms can be cast in this form, and uh, it's a very efficient uh, solution, basically a greedy efficient solution to solve this problem.